Hi, we're going to be doing a canvas painting called Moon Dance today. Now before we begin painting, I want to explain to you that there's an instructional packet available for those of you who actually want to paint the design and not just watch the video. A painting packet includes multiple pages of instructions beginning with a large photo of the finished, uh, of the finished project, multiple pages of step-by-step -step instructions, along with all the supplies that are needed to paint Moon Dance. Most importantly, there is a full-scale line drawing included, and Debbie explains how to transfer the design during the video. She also includes step-by-step -step photos that, at a glance, you can compare your current stage of the painting with the photo. This packet is available on Debbie's website, and the link is below in the description of the video. So let's get started. Hi everyone, before we begin, I wanted to let you know that I've already prepped the canvas. Um, and if you don't know how to prep a canvas proper, properly to make sure that it gets nice and taut, go ahead and head over to my YouTube channel and watch the video on how to prep a canvas. And so I've got one coat of gesso down on top of here, and I've sprayed the back with water. But I also came in and I put one coat of gloss varnish because I really want to make sure my paint is going to move and I want to be able to lift my paint. I am using DecoArt Americana acrylic paints. I'm going to start with two colors that are fairly close to each other, um, Bahama Blue and Teal Mint. I'm starting with the lighter color. And I'm using a slip slap motion. And basically what it is, it's, it's almost forming an X. And you can see that this really covers really well. Now I'm going to pick up some of the Teal Mint. I'm going around the outside edges and I'm very loosely blending it. So I want to create a little bit of texture in here and I have a seawool sponge and I'm going to just lightly put it in the teal mint and then I'm going to use that to just kind of come in and give me a little bit of texture. I'm also going to mix, mist it with a little bit of water and then use the clean side and add a little bit of texture that way. So you can see we have some really fun texture, the white showing through a little bit and it's blending all by itself by using the sponge and it just makes it so much easier to put the two colors together. So I want to show you what I'm doing. I came in and you can see that there's a little bit of like white splatters on here. Well that's not white paint. Since this is very wet from the water and I've got that nice slick surface, I'm just coming in and I've got a toothbrush with some rubbing alcohol and I'm just splattering it. And that's going to add to the texture a little bit more. Okay, I didn't really want these big splatters over here, so I can just come in, just use the side of my brush, and fix them. Now I'm going to pick up some True Blue and add that. And again, I'm going to add it in a slip slap, slip slap manner. I'm going to go over some of these areas. I'm not worried that they're not blended. And we are making a little bit of a different color. And now what I want to do is put my sponge into the blue. And I'm going to go back and forth here. And this is just really creating a fun texture. So 
So now I'm starting to pick up too much white. So what I can do is just go back into my green. If you don't want to carry the blue over. And it's best not to play too much with this. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to just mist this slightly with my rubbing alcohol to bring out some of the white. And then I'm going to go into my primary blue, which is a much darker blue. And I want you to notice that I've not cleaned my brush at all, so I may be getting some other colors in here too. I'll push it up so you can see the whole canvas. And this is called primary blue. little bit over here and a little bit of depth up there. Okay, so because I'm going to come out this way, I've got some of the lighter blue, the um, true blue, back in my sponge, and that's how I'm going to blend this away. So again, if I start getting where I'm losing one of my values, I can go back in and add in just a little bit of sponging. And I'm um, going to add in a little bit more of my blue in here. And then I can go back into my teal mint. Using a sponge is one of the easiest ways to overlap and blend colors and create a really, really fun texture. So now what I'm going to do is I'm misting this with water first. And then I'm going to come in with the mist of rubbing alcohol. And so we're going to let this dry before we go on. But you can see that it's already looking like there's some constellations in the sky, and I really like this because this is going to be where the moon is, and then we're going to have some trees that are just dancing around the moon. So the canvas is dry, and what I've done is I've come in and I've got a little ceramic dish, and I've put 50% water and 50% Prussian blue together and I'm going to take and I'm going to simply create a wash and bring it in just to deepen outside and you can see it's you know while this looks a little celestial this just looks a little messy out here and so it's going to just add some more depth and make it a little bit more even and because it's a wash of color and I've mixed it 50-50 with water it should be fairly thin so what you're going to have to do is fill your brush and then you're going to blot it with paper towel so that you don't have too much paint in, in the um, brush. So I'm going to start on the outside edges and I'm just going to slip slap along the outside just to add some depth. Now in this situation I'm going to spray it with water because the water will then help move it a little bit more. here. And I forgot to blot, blot my uh, brush, being in a hurry to get back to my canvas. So that's why I have too much paint, so I'm going to just again squirt it with water. And just take a paper towel and blot it just a little bit. 
Because what all that's going to do, since I've um, put water on the canvas, it's just going to pick it up, allow the darkness to be on the outside, and see how it blends it away. So there's different approaches that you can take, but this works really well too, just like a sponge. Now I'm going to add a little bit more blue in the center. I'm also going to mix that 50-50 with water. And it's the um, ocean blue. And my brush was a little bit dirty. So again, this is very wet. And all I'm doing is adding just a little bit of glazes on here. Just going to convince it that it's a, a sky. But this is so transparent, it's really not altering things. Just adding some more depth. Maybe just a little bit more interest. So now that it's dry, I've decided that I really want to have even more depth. So I've just added like half of my brush with the Prussian Blue and wiped it on my palette. This is called side loading because you just load part of your brush. And I'm just adding some more depth and you can see how much darker and smoother that is than the outside corners. I'm going to come in with a little bit of red violet. We might need to make sure that we keep this very transparent. So I'm going to let this dry again, and then I'm going to come in with this. I'm going to side load it like I did in the, um, in the corners, where I just load half the brush. You can see I've just got half the brush in here, and then I work it in on palette paper. And I'm going to just come in, because I just want to have a little bit more purple in here. So I think I just needed to come in a little bit heavier with it. Then I'm going to come in with my clean sponge that I've dampened and just soften the outside edges. Yeah, I wanted that to show a little bit more. I want to bring some more of the ocean blue in here. Again, working in layers. This is still wet. I could let this dry, but I think I can work around, oh, around it. And I am just thinning my paint with water. And this is the ocean blue. I'm just using a slip slap motion because it's thin paint and it's so transparent it's working just fine so now I am going to let that dry and I'll show you what else we'll do I wanted to show you that I've taken Bahama Blue and Snow White and I'm going to just mix them together we're going to just make a lighter um, teal color and this will be the outline of our moon. It will look very light against our background. One of my favorite tools I use for many different reasons is a toilet paper holder. And so this one I have just cut. I am dipping the toilet paper into that mixture. Then I'm going to offload it. And then right in this area where it's the lightest, I'm going to stamp down. And that's my circle for my moon. I 
kind of went around the outside edge as I lift my brush. So what I can just do is take a clean brush and clean that away. And that's just going to create a really pretty haze anyway. So all I did was soften it because my brush is filled with water and it created a little bit of a haze over there, which I really like. Now I'm going to take full strength paint and just fill this in. So by using a, a circular stencil or a circular template or my expensive tool of the paper, toilet paper holder, your circle is not going to grow. Because I find most painters, when they start filling in, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we don't want that to happen. Now I have just a little bit of an edge here built up. So I'm going to take my brush that just has water in it and we'll soften that again. Now that the moon area is dry, I'm going to take some water and just dampen. I can tell my water needs to be clean, but I'm just dampening over the whole moon. Then I'm going to pick up full strength Snow White or Titanium White and just kind of put it around the outside edges. That will give us some texture within the moon and also highlight it at the same time. I want to make sure that I'm keeping it a nice circle. I picked up just, there was a, my palette's really dirty, I picked up just a little of that red violet, but it looks kind of pretty, so I'm going to leave that on there. Maybe add it just a little bit more. And then come back in with my white over it. I'm using really old brushes, so uh, you don't have to go out and get really expensive brushes for this particular project. If I was doing something more uh, in the fine art, art I would definitely be using better brushes. Okay, I want most of the white to be in this upper corner here. Okay, I think that's looking very moonish. word. So now I'm trying to decide if I should add some clouds or some more stars. I think what I'd like to do is take my toothbrush and I'm going to thin my white paint with water. And at this point I have very dirty water. So I'm going to thin my white paint with water. So it's kind of like a creamy consistency. And then I'll blot it on a paper towel. And I'm going to splatter. This will just make it look more like there's stars in the sky. We'll let this completely dry and then we're going to add in the trees. Now I've transferred the pattern onto tracing paper and have taped it into position over my canvas so that it will be in the correct position. I'm placing wax-free tracing paper underneath so that um, I can transfer this pattern onto my canvas. And it's really important that you use transfer paper as opposed to carbon paper because carbon paper has oil in it which is smear all over where the wax-free 
transfer paper. It just leaves nice light lines onto your surface. One thing I want to talk about when you're thinking about trees, most realistic trees form a Y-type um, formation. And, but these aren't realistic. I want them to look like they're dancing. So think about the letter S and think about music and how they would be curving and swaying. Now I have lamp black, which I'm going to be using to line and base coat the trees. I want to create more of a cream-like consistency that because I'm going to be using my line abrasion on number three round to originally put in the outer perimeter and the small lines of the tree. I will be using two main brushes, brushes to use to do my lining. Um, one is the number three round and the other is a liner brush. One thing I'd like to point out is if you are not good at doing line work, at this point you could be using a double-sided black identa pen. So let's base coat these trees and let them dance.
much for joining me today. I hope you really enjoyed Moon Dance and enjoyed the canvas painting. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe and so that you will be notified every time I do a new video. I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up if you did like the video. So until next time, may painting always bring you joy.